Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Please be seated. I don't know about you, but I like to collect stories. I enjoy stories. Our Lord taught with stories. Stories are kind of neat, you know. You can carry them around with you. You can remember them pretty easily. And you can learn more than one thing from them. And you can tell them over and over and over and over. The stories are kind of neat. So I have some stories. One of the first stories that I have is that the story is kind of based in reverse on the gospel that you just heard read in two languages. You've all heard of the Titanic. And the night the Titanic sunk, there was a very well-to-do lady who had just seated herself in one of the lifeboats and the lifeboat was about to be launched into a, a very frigid North Atlantic Ocean. And she went to the crew member that was in charge of the lifeboat and she said, I need to run back to my stateroom for a minute. May I do that? And he said, you have three minutes. And if you're not back, we leave without you. Well, she took off across a deck that was already leaning. She went through a casino that was ankle deep in money. <laughs> She ran into a stateroom and pushed aside diamond bracelets, rings, and necklaces, and grabbed three oranges off the head of her bed and ran back to the lifeboat. You see, when death breathed on the Titanic, it changed people's values. It changed what they considered to be important. An hour earlier, she wouldn't have cared less for a whole crate of oranges and would have taken as many diamonds as she could get. But now things were different. Well, hopefully as a result of today, things will be different. Each day is a new day and it's different. Let me tell you about one of the, the quarrels and concerns that scholars have when they begin to talk about the gospel that you heard this morning about the, the, the wedding feast and the, and the ten bridesmaids that were there, and five were foolish and five were wise. Everybody always tries to figure out what did the oil stand for? Well, I'll tell you a story that tells you what the, what the oil stood for. I grew up in the Midwest, so did my wife. We're Midwesterners. And in the Midwest, things are a little different than they are here in South Florida. There's a lot of hilly, wooded land there was a guy who, by the name of Quill who lived in eastern Kentucky. And he was a hunter and a fisherman. And he lived way out in the boonies where nobody else was around. And he didn't have any concern or respect for law or, or rules or licenses or anything like that. And the game warden was always trying to catch him because he knew that he did a lot of fishing, he did a lot of hunting, and that he had this stuff and he would catch these animals out of season and the game warden was going to get it. So one day the game warden had good reason to believe that Quill was going to go fishing. So he got up real early in the morning while it was still dark, went to Quill's house, climbed up on the roof, and was sitting up on the roof, and he heard Quill wake up in the house. And he rummaged around, he knew he built a fire, and then he started some coffee, and he began to make some biscuits. Well, the biscuits smelled pretty good, and you put that together with the coffee, and the game warden was really getting pretty anxious. Well, about that time, Quill walked out the front door of his cabin. And he said, 
I know you're out there. You may as well come in and have some biscuits and coffee while we're warm. <laughs> and the warden couldn't figure out how in blue blazes Quill knew that he was up there. So he climbed down off the roof, walked up on the porch and walked in. He said, Quill, how did you know I was there? He said, I didn't know you were there. I do that every morning because I figure some morning you will be there. <laughs> And that's the way that story goes in the gospel you heard. You never know when the morning will be that the Lord comes. And the, the oil, the oil in those lamps symbolizes, if you want to make it symbolize something, it symbolizes getting ready. Now the catch is that you and I generally are probably not very well prepared. There's a story about a an old guy who had a, had a slave, and this is years and years ago when slaves were allowed in different places, and he decided that this particular slave was really kind of slow, and, and he really wasn't with it too much. So he, he gave the slave a, a staff, and he said, wherever you go, you carry this staff, and when you find a guy that's not as bright as you are, you give it to him. Well, this guy carried this staff around for years. He went into the city, he went into the marketplace. He often found people he didn't think were very bright. But he could never decide if they were brighter or less bright than he was. So he kept the staff. And finally, one day, he went back to his master's house. And they showed him into the master's bedroom. And the master was lying down on bed. And, and he was, was really pretty sick. And so the slave said to him, well, master, how are you? And he said, well, I'm pretty ill. And he said, well, what are you doing? And he said, well, I'm getting ready to go on a journey. And he said, well, when do you plan to be back? And he said, well, I don't think I'm coming back. And he said, well, have you done everything that you could to prepare for this journey? And he said, well, no, I don't suppose I have. And he said, master, you mean you had time and you didn't prepare and yet you're going on this journey? And he said, well, yes, I guess I had my whole lifetime, but I was busy with other stuff. I was always busy doing something else. And I never did get around to it. And the slave sort of looked at him, and he handed him the staff, and he said, I finally found a man who's in worse shape than I am. You've had a whole lifetime to prepare, and you didn't do anything. You and I often fall in that category. We have time to prepare. We know that one of these days, the Lord is coming again. That's what this gospel is really about. It's about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And you and I have ample warning. We know it's going to happen. We just don't know when it's going to happen. So the problem is, what do you do? Well, you get prepared. You get ready every day. You get up every morning and say to yourself, I am a child of God. I am an inheritor of the kingdom. I am a member of the body of Christ. I am valuable. And the Lord loves me. The Lord loves me. And you work on that relationship so that you and the Lord are on a first name basis. So you know him and he knows you. So you know what he likes and what he wants. He already knows what you like and what you want. But you learn what he likes and what he wants. And that's your preparation. Spending your time getting ready to be with the Lord full time. To participate in that heavenly banquet. And this morning we will start a group of people on that journey anew. You know, one of the great things about the church is it's, I don't care what name is on the door, it's always the church of the second chance. You get to come in and start over. And you can start over today. You can start over now. For the day is the day that the Lord hath made. And you and I are to rejoice and be glad in it. So the task is for you and me to spend some time today being prepared to be full time with the Lord and with each other. That's critical.
That's the preparation. That's the three oranges. That's the coffee and the biscuits. That's the oil in the lamps is being prepared to spend eternity with a loving, caring God. Amen. Amen.